everyone, Teacher Sam here, and I'm here to show you what is up with presets and what presets mean in your Minicam classroom and create a ways that you could go ahead and use them. Now, there are two tutorials that uh, I would like you to watch. One is setting up Google Slides. It's on my channel too for Minicam. And the second one is how to use the Minicam mobile app within your Minicam. Those two are going to help you along uh, and uh, elaborate more on some of the presets. But first, let's just take you through and see how to set up a preset. I do have a bunch of presets right here. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete preset number seven right now so we have a nice spot to work with. Now keep in mind when you're setting up your when you're setting up your presets if you do have the studio version your hotkeys only work for presets one through ten. So if you go beyond ten presets you're not going to be able to use your hotkeys for those. So I only use those um, uh, further up presets for things that I use on the occasion and that way I'm just using my click with my translation or cut option on the preset. So um, there's a couple different ways you could set up the presets. You can use the sidebar right here. You could go ahead and use the plus sign that's right here. That's what I'm going to choose to do. So right now I'm going to click on the plus and it gives me all of the options that I can do for my uh, preset. If I were to choose right now the pro, uh, the pro webcam, it would actually just be me <laughs> um, sitting in front of my green screen. Um, this is pretty much my pro webcam. It's the same feed, except here I've gone ahead and turned on chroma key and I've removed my green screen. So that's simply just selecting your camera. Okay, another preset that you could do are IP cameras. Now, very rarely, or I don't even think of when, you would have your IP camera when we're working with um, Minicam. So we're actually gonna go ahead and skip over that one. The um, And we skipped over game two, I'm sorry. Minicam is a live game and streaming software. So there are many people who choose to stream their gaming while working with Minicam. That's a whole nother ball of wax that you need to go into if you plan on using Minicam as your live stream when you're playing games. It is not to be playing games with your student, so we could go ahead and skip that as well. The mobile app, please go ahead and go to my YouTube channel, VIP Kid Teacher Sam. I'll put the link to the video below, but I have a whole video on how to use the VIP Kid mobile app and incorporate it as another feed within your Minicam, in, in your classroom. It's really cool. It teaches you how to do it, but I really want to consolidate this, and so I'm just going to send you over to that resource. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. The next one is a media file. I do use the media files. I like to use this to have a picture maybe of my cats, my family, my dogs, just something that I want the students to see on a regular. It's also a great way to play a game with your students. So let's go ahead and select media files. And now I'm going to go onto my computer and on my desktop, I just saved the media file of a tic-tac-toe board. And there it is. So here's a cool way that I could choose to play tic-tac-toe with my student. Now, I always like to be on screen with my students. So I'm going to right click back on that feed number seven. I'm going to go down to add new layer and I am going to hit the plus sign and now select my webcam. Now I don't like to have the green screen behind me so I'm going to go ahead and turn on coma coma <laughs> chroma key here and just delete my background. And now I have a really fun way of just playing um, tic-tac-toe with my students. Sometimes I will put like a little number here if I want to um, so the student can, you know, choose what number they want to do. Um, there's many different ways you could go ahead and use this, um, but, you know, anyway, you get the idea. You could play tic-tac-toe with your student. Just have them choose what number that they want. So that's how you can use different images uh, and different media files. You can choose to use pictures, um, anything you want that is like a JPEG file. I think it's the best kind to use in the classroom because you could always have it set as a preset. Maybe a picture of a house. Students love to see where their teachers live. Um, and you can have it be like multiple, so you can do like a little bit of a slideshow. That would be nice as well. All right, let's go back and right click. Um, another thing that you could do is use the YouTube URL. And I'm going to show you how to use that now. Now, I do want to go ahead and talk about using caution when using YouTube videos in your classroom. Make sure you've screened them and that they're appropriate um, and nothing is going to come up on the screen. Also, not every classroom allows you to change the microphone and you um, could be subject to an IT issue if you're unable to change your microphone back. So just be cautious. As you can see in my classroom right now, the microphone is going up and down. It's showing that um, you're getting volume right now from my microphone. I'm going to switch to another feed here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say that I want it to be a YouTube URL. I'm just going to grab uh, a YouTube URL from one of my tutorials and I'm going to put it here. 
and I'm going to hit OK. Now it's going to start to come on, so when it comes on, I'm going to stop. Oh, it's funky. That's just I changed Hello. my green screen there. Hi. I Hi. am Teacher Sam. What is your name? My name is Wu Jie. Wu Jie. Hi. All right, so if you take a look over here, uh, it's blinking up and down as I go now. Sorry, I've messed around with my um, chroma key there. Okay, um, you can see that it's blinking up and down when I'm talking, but when the video goes, it's not moving. How old are you? How old are you? I am 21. Every time I hit play, I seem to be on my chroma key. Let me just <laughs> let me get off that chroma key so I can um, hit play and uh, not have to worry about messing it up. Okay, so awesome. So you can see the microphone is not working. So how do I get the microphone to play in the class? Well, the first thing I could just simply do is go in and select uh, Minicam to be my microphone. Let's watch now when I hit play. Let's see. How old are you? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So right now my student is hearing what's coming through on the microphone. They're hearing my speaking and it's coming through into the classroom. Um, sometimes people say that you need to go into your settings and you need to change audio and say listen to sound from your microphone, but it doesn't seem to be needing something that you do. When you use the YouTube URL as a feed, you could just then select Minicam microphone and you should be able to hear it in your classroom. Don't forget to go ahead and switch back to your regular headset when you're done. That way the student will be able to hear you after the video is over. I hope that one was helpful. Let's give you some more tips and tricks. Awesome. And another way that we could go ahead and use it is to choose desktop. Now, desktop is what I use when I use my uh, Google Slides. I have Google Slide up on the side um, made by the wonderful Beth Pender. Um, I always use a custom area when I'm using my Google Slides. Um, I turn my Google Slides, um, I delete everything from the word edit on and I replace it with the words preview. I do have a video on how to set up for Google Slides um, and I'll put that link below as well. Um, but I do like to use this. Uh, I tend to use the custom area the most when I'm using Google Slides. Um, another thing that you can use when you're on that desktop, I'm going to go back to desktop, is um, you could do your full screen. If I was to select full screen right now, you're seeing my entire computer. I don't know why anybody would want to see my entire computer, but uh, simply that's what you would see there. We're going to go back to desktop and we're going to go to app window. And now if you see, these are the some of the windows that I do have open. I could choose this build a bouquet. It's the same uh, one with with Beth, but for some reason, whenever I try to use that feature, it does not work successfully. Um, so when I use the app um, app window, it just will not select the correct one that I want it to select for some reason. I have no idea. Um, when I do go into desktop and instead choose app area and I go into build a bouquet, it does work there. Um, but then I see a little bit too, too much um, and you really need to play around. I just really feel the custom desktop is the best way to go. Um, but the nice thing about this is I can have that minimized. Um, so if I am only using one screen, I can have it minimized and it still saves some landscape on my computer. Um, so you could go ahead and mess around and decide how the features are going to work best on your computer. Honestly, custom desktop is one of the best ways to go. All right, let's right click and go back to desktop. We already did custom area. We can draw on our desktop if I wanted to. Um, I could select a color and um, all right, I want to do this one and I'm going to choose draw. And now I could draw on my actual desktop. Uh, this will be cool if we actually uh, were in a desktop feature. I'm trying to figure out why else I would want to do that. I know this is sounding like really boring here. Um, we can choose, um, if I was in the full screen, I guess. I don't really know why actually I'm going to want to draw on my desktop. Um, part of it is, uh, I, guess, I guess I know, here's a way. Um, if I'm in this build a bouquet, and I want to, um, sorry, set this up as custom area like I did before. And I'm on this build a bouquet. And now, um, instead of drawing like up here in Minicam, say I wanted to draw on the slide here instead, um, I can choose to draw on desktop. That'll give me this like thing here. And I can actually, um, draw like pretty little flowers in the vase. Um, but you know, you can draw right in Minicam. So, you know, again, 
you gotta come up with your own ways to how you would do it. Usually I can come up with something creative, but my brain's just not working right now. So if you have a cool way to use that feature, find it and please share it. Uh, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to number seven. That's where I was. Um, web source URL. In order to be able to use the web source URL, you actually have to download the web source um, app uh, application. It's kind of built within ManyCam. I went ahead and did it, and it actually is not very good. Um, if I wanted to use something like Google.com, it just basically would give you a browser within your app, but it actually does not work ideally. Um, it's small, and honestly, I can't even figure out how to get it where um, I could type in the box um, and actually be do a functional search. So we're going to go ahead and ignore that, along with the RTMP servers, really, unless you are going ahead and using an RTMP server, you're not going to need this. Um, so the main ones that I find are going to be the most successful for you are going to be the mobile app, the media files, the YouTube URL, the desktop, and the blank image, which is honestly a great way I touched on that to um, Oh, I chose the wrong one. <laughs> it's going to be a, a great way um, to go ahead and give yourself a really nice dry erase board. Let me go ahead and come back on screen. Once again, I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to hit the plus sign. I'm going to come back on screen. So now I just have a dot on my nose and I have a really nice like dry erase board behind me. Once again, I could go into my chroma key. I could turn it on and I can get rid of this. So I'm nice and clear. Um, right there. Um, something else to think about as I go back to my presets, when you right click, you can change your video presets view. You can choose to have view one, which is going to be a row, or you can choose to have view two, which is a staggered type or tiled. I don't know, stacked type. Anyway, I hope this was somewhat helpful to tell you how to go through your presets. Um, there are other ways and other things that people have come up with to use some of the other presets, but I think staying simple, staying basic is gonna be your best way to go to get the full benefits of ManyCam. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Have a great day.